Hey there, Mr. Weaver here, and this is 8th grade, module 8, lesson 3, rotations. After this lesson, you need to be able to use coordinate notation to find the coordinates of a figure that has been rotated about the origin, as well as describe the angle of rotation using the given graph and coordinates of the figures. Let's learn. Rotations about a vertex. A rotation is a transformation in which a figure is rotated or turned about a fixed point. Rotations are our third type of transformation we've seen, in addition to translations and reflections. The center of rotation is the point that's fixed that the object or the shape rotates around. A rotation does not change the size or shape of the figure, so the pre-image and the image in a rotation are congruent similar to translations and reflections. Rotations are described in degrees and direction. So the phrases 90 degrees clockwise or 270 degrees counterclockwise are examples of the types of descriptions you might see. Let's look at a couple of them here. So first, if we had a 90 degree clockwise rotation, then each point and segment on the shape would be rotated 90 degrees. So 90 degrees would make a right angle and it would be rotated clockwise. Think about an old, older analog clock where the hands move around clockwise, goes down to the right, and then it goes back up. That is clockwise. So I'm gonna put CW for clockwise. So 90 degrees here, we can see it made a quarter of a turn downward to the right. If we saw 180 degrees, this is half of a turn, and here we can see it went in a counterclockwise direction, since it's going downward to the left. It's the opposite direction. The hands on a clock would be going backward. So if we see it going down to the left or up to the right, then this would be counterclockwise. And I'm going to write CCW for that. If it's 180 degrees, the nice thing is it doesn't matter if it's going clockwise or counterclockwise, you're going to end up in the same place. Last, we could rotate 270 degrees. This is three-fourths of a turn. So where 90 degrees was one-fourth of a turn, 180 was half of a turn, 270 is three-fourths of a turn. So we can see here, this one went three-fourths of a turn in the clockwise direction. So it rotated all the way around three-fourths of a turn, 270 degrees. All the points on that shape were rotated the same amount. Sometimes these rotations are hard to visualize, so it's going to be important to look at where it starts and where it ends and just compare points. Example 1. Rotate figures about a vertex. Triangle LMN with vertices L at 5, 4, M at 5, 7, and N at 8, 7 represents a desk in Jackson's bedroom. He wants to rotate the desk counterclockwise 180 degrees about vertex L. Given these types of problems, our first step would be to graph it. So if we graph our original triangle here, we can see it in blue, L, M, N. Remember, the original pre-images do not have the little prime symbols. We want to rotate it 180 degrees, so half of a turn, about vertex L. When you see this phrase, about vertex, and then it tells you, or later in examples, about the origin, that is telling you what point is going to stay the same everything else moves around it. So if you imagine if you planted your foot on the ground and you turned, the foot that you're rotating around stays in the same place while all the rest of your body moves around it. So if we graph our figure here, then we can graph the rotated triangle. So M from L to M was rotated 180 degrees. Now it's facing the opposite direction. L to N rotated 180 degrees. Now it's facing the opposite direction. And then we can just connect M with N, and we have rotated our triangle. Once we've successfully rotated our figure, and we would need to redraw it, it's easier to see the full shape if it's redrawn, we can then write the coordinates of the image. So where did L prime end up? That was the point that we rotated about, so it should be the same as it was, 5 over 4 up. M prime is now down here at 5, 1, and n prime is at 2, 1. If we're rotating about a figure on the plane, there's not really any special tricks using the coordinates like we saw with translations and reflections. 
if you're just rotating around the vertex that's on the shape, you're just going to have to figure out what the new vertices are. There may be rules that we could write, however, they're a little too complicated to figure out for what we need in this lesson. Check your understanding, read through the situation, and complete both parts. Pause the video now and complete the check. Let's check. So first, let's plot our original figure. So this is our pre-image here in blue. We have our vertices. We have A, B, C, and D. Then if we want to rotate it 90 degrees clockwise about vertex C. So C would stay in the same place. That's going to be the key. That one doesn't move. Everything else gets rotated a quarter of a turn, so 90 degrees clockwise. So it would move up to the right clockwise. Since C is the one that's staying in place, everything's going to move clockwise. So that's going to move down that way, that's going to move up that way, that's going to move up that way. If we plot our points, B, 90 degrees, would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it would be up here, so here would be B prime. From that, if I just follow the pattern, A was in that direction, so now A has to be like in that direction, still 90 degrees. A would be over here, so there's A prime. And then D, if we can complete the rectangle, would be down there, so D prime would be right there. So we can plot those points, connect to that rectangle, and I have my rotated figure. Notice the order in a rotation stayed the same. So it went A, B, C, D, following around in the counterclockwise direction, a, B, C, D, still around in the counterclockwise direction. So that's a way you can check to make sure you're doing stuff correctly. What are our coordinates of our image? A prime is now at 1, 6. B prime is at negative 2, 6. C prime is at negative 2, 1. That was the one that we rotated around, so that should be the same. And D prime is at 1, 1. Let's learn. Rotations about the origin. The coordinates of an image rotated clockwise about the origin can be determined using coordinate notation. So in the previous example where we were rotating about a vertex on the shape, we could not use coordinate notation. Now we will be able to. When the figure is rotated about the origin, the center is 0, 0. Each point on the original figure and its image are the same distance from the origin. So if they started off three units away, they would stay three units away. Just like we've been dealing with, the pre-image and the image are congruent. So knowing this, let's look at some specific types of rotations. So first, a 90 degree clockwise rotation. So 90 degrees clockwise is a quarter of a turn down towards the right or up to the left. When we're thinking about coordinate notation, it's going to look like this. So our original coordinate is going to turn into this. The x coordinate so notice here, is the same as the y-coordinate of the original. The y-coordinate is the opposite of the x from the original. So what you can think about is if it's a 90 degrees clockwise rotation, essentially these two values switched places. So instead of xy, it's now yx. And the x1 is the opposite. If you're trying to remember which one is the opposite, think about starting up at the top. And if you're going clockwise, which coordinate is it pointing at? 90 degrees would be pointing at the x. So that would be the one that's the opposite. And as a helpful hint later, 90 degrees clockwise has the same coordinate notation as 270 degrees counterclockwise since they end up in the same position. Either way, if I go 90 degrees clockwise or 270 counterclockwise, I end up pointing at this coordinate so I know I need to make it the opposite. With our 180 degrees rotations, Clockwise or counterclockwise, they give you the same end result, so our coordinate notation would be the same. For this, we take our original coordinate, and then we just make them the opposite sign. So x is the opposite of what it was, y is the opposite of what it was. This is the easiest one to remember. You're not switching their positions, you're just making them the opposite. If you're trying to think about this, when you are standing, if they tell you to do a 180, you are now facing the opposite direction. So just make what you are doing the opposite. For 270 degree rotations, we can kind of think it the same way as the 90 degree rotations. We take our original coordinate, we're going to switch their positions, and then it's the opposite of the 90. So if we're going 270 counterclockwise, 
Which one am I pointing at to get to the opposite? It is that first coordinate. So it follows the same kind of logic as a 90 degree rotation, but we're making three fourths of a turn instead of one fourth. And just like the 90 degree clockwise was the same as 270 counterclockwise, a 270 clockwise is the same as a 90 degree counterclockwise. So they're going to end up in the same position. Example two, rotate using coordinates. Triangle DEF has vertices negative 4, 4, negative 1, 2, and negative 3, 1. The triangle is rotated 90 degrees clockwise about the origin. So the key phrase here is, is about the origin, so we can use our coordinate notation if we choose to. Write the coordinate notation for a clockwise rotation of 90 degrees about the origin, then write the coordinates for triangle D prime, E prime, F prime. So first let's write our coordinate notation. When we're dealing with 90 degrees clockwise, as it said, the X coordinate is the same as the Y coordinate, but the Y coordinate is the opposite of the X coordinate. So our coordinate notation would be this. Our coordinate changes to Y and then opposite of X. So again, these switched spots and the opposite of the one that I pointed to by rotating 90 degrees. So using our function notation, we have y and the opposite of x. Let's write this out. So first, what I would do when I'm thinking about this is switch their spots. So this would become 4 and negative 4. And then 90 degrees means this one is becoming the opposite. So 4 and 4. For e prime, if I switch their spots, 2 would be first. The opposite of negative 1 would be second, so positive 1. For f prime, 1 would be first, then opposite of negative 3, so 1, 3. Check your understanding, read through the situation, and answer both parts. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. First, our coordinate notation for 180 is just opposite of x, opposite of y. So if we're doing that for our coordinates for m prime, n prime, p prime, q prime, I just make all of these the opposite of what it was. So m prime is now negative 2, negative 5, n prime is negative 6, negative 4, p prime, negative 6, negative 1, and q prime would be negative 2, negative 1. Example 3. Describe rotations. Use coordinate notation to describe the rotation. Then determine the angle of rotation. Assume the rotation is clockwise about the origin. So this is where coordinates can be especially helpful for us to figure out what's happening. At first glance, we might think that maybe to get from A, B, C to A prime, B prime, C prime, maybe we made a reflection and then another reflection, or maybe we did a translation and a reflection. At some point, you're going to see multiple things happening at the same time. So using our coordinates, we can figure out the most efficient way to go from our pre-image to our image. So in our pre-image, A was at negative 6, negative 2, B is at negative 5, 1, and C is at negative 2, negative 3. What are the coordinates for our image? A prime is at 6, 2, B prime is at 5, negative 1, and C prime is at 2, 3. Now looking at these, I'm trying to see how the numbers compare. So I had negative 6, now it's positive 6. Negative 5, positive 5. Negative 2, positive 2. My image was just the opposite of whatever was there. For the y coordinate, negative 2, positive 2. 1, negative 1. Negative 3, positive 3. It's the opposite of the y that was there. They are just opposites. So this must be our coordinate notation. Our point changed to opposite of x and opposite of y. Now let's determine our angle of rotation using what we just figured out for coordinate notation. So since this was our coordinate notation, we must be talking about a 180 degrees rotation. And it did say clockwise, so this was 180 clockwise. So our angle of rotation was 180 degrees. And if we go back and look at our picture, it makes sense. It looks like it rotated 180 degrees for each part. It may be hard to visualize here if that's 180 degrees, but if we were to connect, we can see it going through that middle point that we did make half of a turn each time. Check your understanding. 
Use coordinate notation for this rotation, then determine the angle of rotation. Again, assume that it is clockwise about the origin. Pause the video now and complete this check. Check your answer. So first our coordinate notation, if we were to just check some points, so A here was at 5, 2, A prime here is at 2, negative 5. So looking at it, the number switched positions, and this one is now the opposite sign. Let's double check using a different coordinate. So B was at 2, 1. B prime is now at 1, negative 2. So again, the number switched positions, and this one is negative. So they switched positions, and this one is the opposite. What angle must that be? We drew from the top pointing to the second coordinate. That is a 90 degree clockwise rotation. And we can see that if we're thinking about our middle point here, from B to B prime, what angle did that come up with? That was 90 degrees. Or from C to C prime, what angle? Again, 90 degrees.